D&D players, what legendary move in a campaign will live on forever in infamy? Part three. Had an anti-vaxxer rogue once. Basically, I didn't believe in potions. My character thought the regional empire made up the effects and were really trying to slowly poison the pop. The only way I could heal was through magic or by waiting around long enough. Why did I do this? DM was an anti-vaxxer and couldn't call me dumb for the parallel and even had to try and give me bat bonuses to rationalize my obvious jab at his beliefs. Me. Drops lit Molotov. Gets downed. Fire ignites oil in pack. Destroys most of my stuff except my weapon and troll skin. So I wear the troll skin as clothes. Some con fails later turn into a chaotic evil troll in the middle of the boss fight. Boss and party start focus firing on me. I die within a round of becoming a troll. Oh, and the party skins me after the fight. I got one. I was playing a rogue elf, so naturally, I played the role of an assassin who only wielded daggers. While we were walking through this maze of a stronghold and we come to a staircase with a guard at the bottom of it. I decided to try my luck and jump off the top of the stairs and land a hit. And lo and behold, I rolled a natural 20. So double damage plus sneak bonus damage plus my strength mod, I ended up having 3d8 plus 3 to a lonely guard. I didn't know at the time, but he only had 7 hit points. Rolled 2 8s and 1 6 for total damage of 25, more than triple his health. I did so much damage, the DM said that I literally pinned him to the ground with my dagger and had to roll to see if I got my dagger out of his body and out of the concrete. Didn't succeed. After seeing this, the orc in my group was very impressed and threw me a spare dagger he had and just clapped at what I had done. Epic moment that I'll probably remember forever. Crying laughing emoji, crying laughing emoji. It's my favorite emoji. Paladin pretty much adopted this orphan girl that we found, treats her like a daughter in every way. We are in a dungeon. Enemies pop out to ambush us. Paladin shoves his daughter into a closet to keep her safe. After the fight, we open the closet wasn't a closet. It was a highly protected corridor leading to a treasure room. The paladin pushed his daughter onto a lightning rune. Nothing but a singed corpse remains. It wasn't even DM fuckery. DM had planned the next arc to revolve around the daughter. We still give that player shit about barbecuing his daughter. Party was having trouble with a puzzle that was admittedly very easy, but we were all a bunch of clowns as players, so progress was slow going. The rest of the party had finally reached the point of walking away and coming back to it later. My character, a human fighter whose dumb stat was charisma, knelt down before the pedestal and gave it a hug, saying things like, wow, what a magnificent puzzle you are. You're so cunning. I don't think anyone could solve you. I wish I could just take you home and play with you forever, etc., as if talking to a dog. The puzzle opens itself. Turns out the puzzle was sentient and apparently had low self-esteem. Not much of Infamous, but a stupid move that made all players and even DM rage and years later is still brought up regularly every time PC falls unconscious. More than half of the group is dead. Ooh, a druid, I love a druid. Me, Dave's favorite, and Cleric are the last ones standing against the cult leader and his followers pulling all kinds of divine anger and holy vengeance and eventually crushing the ceiling, killing most of them. Since there was only two of us left, the experience would have been through the roof. Then, when the rest of the party was eventually resurrected and teleported back to us, we stumble upon the artifact, which is able to contain some kind of evil ocean entity already rampaging through the city. Cleric succeeds on the religion check and tells us that in order to activate it, we must make a free will sacrifice. Basically, one of us had to kill himself, showing the resolve to vanquish the evil. So I, knowing that, and that Cleric still has some healing spells, tell him to be ready to heal me, then slit my throat with my bone dagger and fall unconscious. DM, cleric name. You feel the life force leaving your teammate and the sudden burst of divine power from an artifact coming to life once more. It is activated. What do you do? Cleric, I wait. DM, you know that good entities usually do not require the sacrifice itself, but the willingness to do so, so you don't have to let your friend die in your arms. Cleric, I check his breath. DM, you hear his last whisper and understand that you have only few seconds to save your friend before his heart stops beating. You have one action to do something. One. Action. What are you going to do? Out of character. Dude, please. Cleric. Damn, I check his pulse. DM. Yeah, he's totally dead now. 
That's how I ended up in a divine artifact for a few days and lost two levels worth of experience. And I check his pulse still is a huge meme in our campaigns whenever someone's unconscious and rolling death saves. TLDR, Claire killed me by checking pulse on my dead body instead of actual healing. Okay. I got a really humble story to tell from a D&D &D session. We had a paladin, cleric, rogue, bard, and ranger as our party. I was the ranger. So we entered this town after hearing there was a werebeast on the loose and the mayor needed our help to kill it. Our bard, paladin, and rogue went off to find info on where the beast was last located while me and the cleric stayed in the tavern organizing our supplies. The DM then said, you hear screams at the first floor of the tavern. I grabbed my bow while the cleric grabbed what we call le stick and went downstairs to see the werebeast. The beast was a standard werewolf, but the cleric noted that it was noticeably smaller than most werewolves. Both me and the cleric fought the werewolf and chased it after it broke out of the tavern. We found our paladin, and I stopped to tell her our situation while the cleric was in hot pursuit of the werewolf. After we gathered the party, we headed off in the direction of our cleric outside of town in a cave. When we went into the cave, we see the cleric on his knees with something in his arms. When we got closer, we then saw that he had a little girl in his arms, wrapped around in cloth. He was covered in bruises and scratches, but was lucky to not be bit. Our party didn't know what to do with the kid, as she was the beast terrorizing the town. We don't want to kill her, but she will turn into a werewolf again once it's a full moon. Our bard and rogue then thought that we could try to get rid of the curse, which everyone was surprised to hear, as the two had a history of dumb ideas. They suggested we go to a church with the god our cleric worshipped and pray for the girl to be free from the curse. We head back to town to the church, but made sure to go to a store and get the girl new clothes first. We got to the church, and by sheer luck, our cleric rolled a 20, getting rid of the curse. Or so we thought. The girl can still turn into a werewolf, but she was now able to transform at will to her werewolf form. We found out that the girl's name was Luna, what a coincidence, and also found out that she was an orphan left on the streets to survive on her own. We kept her in our party, and the whole party took care of her. By the end of our final session, the cleric married the paladin and adopted Luna. The cleric and paladin had two kids with the great-great-grandkid being the next character for our next session. Me and my friends love this session just solely because of the heartwarming moments our characters had with Luna and we all made damn well sure she lived to the very end. In the first campaign I played in, I played a wizard named Delkesh. Delkesh had just hit level three and now knew the spell Alter Self. This session, we were raiding a bandit camp which was split down the middle by a small river. And after some maneuvering around to get in better position, we ended up killing a couple bandits in the area of the camp where they were holding prisoners. One of them managed to shout out before he was killed, which caught the attention of the bandit leader. I came up with what I figured at the time would be a horrible plan. I'm gonna replicate the appearance of one of the now dead bandits to buy us some time. The party hid the two dead bandits just as Delkesh finished casting the spell and walked around the corner of a building to cut off the approaching bandit leader. Only nobody knew he was the leader. I said... There's something going on over across the bridge. I've seen people over there. You should go check it out. The leader looked at Delkash and said, Marcus, you don't sound good. And since when do you tell your leader what to do? I panicked and replied, When it makes sense. DM had me roll persuasion. Nat 1. He rolled for the leader to see if he saw through my deception. Also a nat one. At that point, the DM no longer had a clue what to do, so he just rolled with it and had the bandit leader go across to check the other side of the bridge. Meanwhile, Delkesh went and found another bandit who was guarding what appeared to be a storeroom and said, Hey, I heard some noises over by the prisoner cages. Need you to come check it with me. The bandit looked at me like I was insane and said, I can't leave. Somebody has to guard the loot. I said, Fine, I'll guard the loot. You go check on it. Roll the persuasion. Nat 20. That bandit handed me the keys and wandered off to where the rest of our party was waiting in ambush and got decimated. A few minutes later, Delkesh found another bandit and repeated the same ruse about hearing noises by the prisoner cages. This bandit said, Why well, don't you go check it out? I immediately replied, I can't. Fucking Gerald ran off and I got stuck guarding the loot. When the bandit asked, Who's Gerald? I said, you know, the new guy who came in last week. Fucking new guys, unreliable pricks. Roll for persuasion, nat 19. Guy suddenly remembered a person who didn't exist and ran off to check the prisoner cages and subsequently died. Fast forward a year and a half. I'm playing in a new campaign, but playing as a much older version of Delkesh. Our party is breaking into a warehouse slash office to try to find some info about what this particular merchant group is doing as we suspect they're trying to stage a coup against the town watch and take over the city. I use Alter Self to disguise my appearance as one of the merchant guards, and I bring our party druid and our party cleric with me. 
The cleric is also an older version of one of Dalkesh's friends from the first campaign. I asked the druid to wild shape into a wolf, which I used minor illusion to put a leash on, and then lead the cleric with me by the arm. One of our party members had already started a ruckus around the front of the warehouse, and it looked like they were about to be fighting. So I opened the side door and ushered the cleric inside. When questioned by the other merchant guards inside, I told them, I heard the noise out front and thought there might be trouble, and this old lady was standing out there and I didn't want her to get hurt, so I thought I'd bring her upstairs until things died down. Rolled for persuasion. Six. But because I looked like one of the guards, they went with it for the time being until one of them asked who I was. Oh, I'm Gerald. I just started here last week. This isn't my normal patrol, but I heard all the commotion and I figured I'd come help. The DM in this campaign has heard all my Delkesh stories from that first campaign. He's a real life friend of mine. So as soon as I said my name was Gerald, he knew the reference and resigned himself to what was about to happen. His exact words were, son of a bitch, fucking Gerald. I rolled a nat 20 on the persuasion check. He used persuasion since the enemies weren't hostile towards someone who looked like one of them. And suddenly other people in the room started shouting out, oh, hey, Gerald, good to see you, man. Suddenly other people in the room started shouting out, oh, hey, Gerald, good to see you, man. And one guy even shouted, hey, man, you owe me 20 silver from last week's poker game. They let me walk right into the office where we told the warehouse foreman and his five assistants that we weren't going to hurt them so long as they let us search the place and we would give them whatever money we found as payment for their silence, which they could then use to find new jobs someplace far away. After finding 150 gold and splitting it between the six of them, they were very happy with us and let us do basically whatever we wanted. When we were done, I redisguised myself as Gerald, and we walked right out without anyone suspecting a thing. The ruse went off so well that my character agreed to be at the next poker tournament with them forgetting he wasn't actually Gerald, LOL. Hello, my gooey little apple turnovers of ecstatic joy and delight. Thank you for sending your glistening, glowing tendrils of sweet, frothy attention to this video. And thank you for watching these videos. And we are so close to 50k subs. All of us here at the channel are low-key shitting ourselves. And if loving every moment of the shitting ourselves bit is wrong, then baby, I don't want to be right. If this is your first time tuning into our channel, hello, welcome. Please stay a while. Doff thy weary armor and drink thyself drunk of tales of high magic, high jinx, and... Hi, druids. Warm thy weary hands and heart by the hearth as the bard weaves tales of daring, debauchery, and dracophilia. As some of you may know, I managed to peer pressure all of my peers here at the channel into finally playing some fucking D&D and shit at 50k subs, and we're legit almost there, so we've been hard at work creating what will certainly be a very much 100% serious, life or death, dramatic and grim, fire and brimstone, super special, super spoopy, very awesome, never droopy, 50k subscriber, extrava- fucking ganza of a DD &D game that we are very yes super excited to share with you all live on this very channel so stay tuned for the announcement thank you again for all that you do for this channel please leave a comment and we hope you can all tune into the stream please subscribe for nat 20s and we'll see you next time greg awaits thee stay delicious my friends